Greetings, viewers. I'm your host, Eric the Car Guy, and welcome back to another episode of the final assembly of the 1979 Ford Fairmont. Here before you today, this would be episode six in that series. And before the end of this video, you will get a chance to see how I screwed up my carburetor hat. Every time I look at it, I'm still sad. I also do some more work on the cold side and we make some progress there. It's not a long video today. Basically what these follow is the actual days of work that I did in order to get this car from what it was when I got it to what you see here today. There's one other important milestone that we're gonna start this video off with right now. Take it away, Eric. This will be my first official day of working on it, the new toolbox. I moved everything over last weekend. Uh, um, no, I'm still gonna be organizing some stuff, but it is March 7th, 2017. First day using the box. Very excited. Oh, I love that thing. Toolbox cam. <laughs> Couple of things. I wanna cut this hole here, but I'm probably gonna make the uh, outline a bit larger. I'm gonna put a rubber hose down there. Uh, so we have a little bit more room. Another thing is I need to well, remove this carb hat so that I can make accommodations for the, uh, hang on here. All right, these partitions here are coming into contact with the fuel bowl vents. So what I need to do is I need to clearance these so that they can clear these so that I can put this on like this pointing that way like that. Right now I can't necessarily do that because as I said, those bowl vents are in the way. Also uh, the accelerator pump outlets. So I guess what I'm gonna do is, uh, well I wanna measure the height of this. I also wanna measure how far in to go. And then I'll transfer those measurements to the inside of here so I know how much to cut away. And it looks like I also have to take into account, there's a little bit of a lip here as well. I think the quickest way to do that is to grab my caliper and I'm just going to come along the side here. So it looks like 144, we'll call it 145. We don't, we actually want to go a little bit bigger. How about there? I don't want to block off the top of the bowl vent because this is very important. This helps equalize the pressure inside the fuel bowl. So this vent needs to be here in order for the fuel to exit the bowl itself and so that the bowl can fill. Now let's take our measurement, which it turned out to be about 167. Why don't we just round that up to 170? As I said, I'm gonna transfer that measurement over, but you know, I'm noticing something here. This is curved. So really, I only have to go so far in, and now I'm scratching my head because this flow isn't coming straight down until the very end. I don't think I need to go that deep, but I do need to remove uh, a good amount. So as far as depth goes, We'll say in there. So that'll be our, our range of depth, somewhere around there. And you know what? I'll go in stages and try it out. Now I need to measure how far over to come into here. So I'm not gonna cut this whole area out. I'm just gonna like cut this out and cut this out so that I've got the clearance that I need. All right, we need to come in. Looks like 1.1 or 1.2, somewhere in that neighborhood. And I can easily transfer that measurement in here. So I need to remove roughly that amount. What I might do is just start with that. Think of an efficient way to do this, but first I'm gonna take this rubber off of here. Because the last thing I wanna do is fill this guy with metal shavings. So I'm going to start with a pneumatic saw and see if I can just come in here and make sort of a cut over. So I'm going to cut down to a certain point. In fact, I'll probably do it this way. Cut down to a certain point and then try to curve it over and then go the rest of the way with a, a grinder. You know, it might be time to invest in a set of like aluminum or brass jaws for this thing. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this. I might just have to grind it all out. This old bit is all clogged up with aluminum. I don't know how to get it out and it's making it less effective. So I'm gonna go for this coarse one and then I'll switch to something a little finer uh, after the fact. Oh, wow.
That is certainly making short work of it. I did a bit of Googling off camera to, to figure this issue out. And it appears that before you start cutting, to uh, soak these with soap or use WD-40 as you're using them on aluminum. There's actually specific bits for aluminum. They also say to use coarse bits, so like what I have here is, is actually much better. But before you ever go here, what they recommend, like I say, is to uh, treat the bits with, with hand soap or WD-40. I was able to clean both of these out with the aluminum. Well, this one for the most part, there's still a little bit down in there. I basically chiseled it out with a screwdriver and then cleaned it up with the wire wheel. So hopefully this will do the trick. But the WD-40 seems to be doing the trick. The bits are no longer getting clogged up. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit but not much. And you can see it's cutting pretty well too. Well, you need to stay on there in order for me, you to work. You really do. Whoa. Oh, man. That sucked. That just momentarily jumped out of there and... Uh, so disappointing. Maybe it'll buff out. I need to get all this stuff out of here. Sorry, I'm so bummed about that. I go through all this trouble to try to keep this thing clean and nice and bam. Just went over and checked this on the car. I stuck this on the carburetor after cleaning it out and I was able to take this flashlight, stick it in here and shine it in and look through that top hole. It's going to be like nearly impossible to show you. Uh, but anyway, I found that it was hitting right here on the inside. So the accelerator pump was hitting this and it seems to be hitting it quite a bit. So I'm just going to come across like this and just open that whole thing up hopefully without doing any more damage to the outside. <laughs> See how this works now. I got it. I can position it anywhere I want. I'm going to go in with the smaller bit and clean it up so that it quote unquote flows better. Going to take one last peek in there with the uh, flashlight just to see what it's doing. Looks like it misses it by quite a lot. It's to that point where if I keep messing with it, I'm just gonna pretty much end up with nothing, but I've got smoother transitions than what I had before. I also have to come up around the south side that I hit, like with this part of the die grinder where the O-ring sits, but I'm gonna hand file that. I'm also gonna take the WD-40 to my hand files just in case. Can't see how it'll hurt. It worked awesome on the uh, die grinder bits. Let's clean this up really good. I'm also going to clean up my workbench. I'll show you why. Yep. And that's after I swept. So all of this is everywhere. But there's my finished product. It's not quite even, but even enough. Ugh, I can't stand to look at that. Can't do anything about it now. But this is kind of nice. I've got a much smoother transition here, although like when the air comes in, it's gonna hit this and just sort of, I don't know, it'll, it'll create a little bit of turbulence. I, I hope it doesn't mess up the flow of it too much. I'm gonna rinse this out with some brake clean and then do this all again.
pretty. Next, I wanna cut the hole for this pipe. We don't need this pipe in here right now for that. In fact, it's just gonna be in the way. So let's just take it right out. Next, I wanna cut this hole. I also think it would be a good idea to move all of this out of the way. I we'll need to unplug the uh, squirter or windshield washer, whatever we're calling it, simple enough. Before it comes out, I can mark this for to know where it goes. <laughs> and I'm also going to need to disconnect the squirter hose so that it all doesn't come running out so I can get it over to the sink. All this does is slide into the fender over here. There's a little slot that it goes into. Wow, got rid of that with zero mess. I guess that makes up for what just happened. But I'm gonna take this, clean out the inside. I will reuse it because uh, it really just needs to be cleaned out. With that out of the way, I'm coming in with my new tube and put this over the old marks, but I'm gonna slightly offset it. I don't know if I'm gonna mount the horn back here or not, but the reason I'm trying to sort of stay away from this is on the back side, there's some thicker metal that might be more difficult to cut through. I may possibly still m mount the horn down there. I didn't say I would. But this seems like a better hole. I'm likely going to go even bigger in here. You remember that trick that I did for the uh, air filter and that stuff? I'm going to do the same thing over here and put a piece of rubber hose. So if I can cut this a little large, well, that should mean that I can do the same thing here to protect the pipe as it passes through the body there. Let's check to see how this goes through at an angle. That is perfect. Like, perfect. I'm gonna put a piece of fuel line in there just like I did for the other side. It occurs to me that I may be being overconfident because <laughs> I haven't even bothered to check to see where the inner pipe comes in. Yeah, let's just go for it. All right, have that little gap on purpose because if I do bolt the horn back there, I want to be able to do it. If the hose is over the top of it, it won't do it. I don't feel like putting this all the way back up in the air. I also don't feel like I have to. I can just fish this on up in, attach it to the intercooler, and see what I got. I managed to land it about perfect. Let's see how this fits. That looks like it was made to be there. Super happy about this pipe that was part of the kit. It's it comes right around these breathers. It's literally perfect. So now I need to connect this straight pipe with this. And I need to figure out what's gonna do that. Just remove this for now. See what this connection does. That's gonna be the determining factor is, is pretty much how this connects up. And it looks like I'm gonna have to lift this up in the air in order to reach my arm up inside so that uh, I can connect this pipe, so I can figure out where the heck it is I'm gonna cut this pipe and the other pipe and what kind of connection I'm gonna have between the two. It's either gonna be a 90 or it's gonna be a 60, sort of like what I did inside here. The light works way better when I pointed it when I'm trying to look at. It seems that my hole gonna have to get larger. And you know where it's gonna have to get larger? Yeah, you guessed it, at that part where the horn comes through. Just made a little discovery that means I uh, likely won't have to cut the hole again. This was like a 60 that was on there. I took the 90 that was over here off, 
put it onto here just to see how it would fit, and it fit great. So, looks like I'm going with a 90 instead of a 60 there. Good thing I ordered both a 90 and a 60. I also ordered a new one of these pipes uh, so that I can move my blow-off valve. So this will just be a U-shape, but it'll be a little bit shorter, but I'm okay because I've got uh, plenty of clearance here. Uh, the other thing is I ordered another pipe, a T-pipe is what they call it. So it's a straight pipe, but it's got this uh, welded flange in it so I can put my blow-off valve right up off of it. So I'll be a T-valve there and then come down with a 60 or a 90 uh, into what will be this pipe that comes around. So really with minimal stuff, I'm able to get this done. And I just figured I'd get a whole new pipe for this. It just seemed to make sense. So that fits in there like beautiful. Like so beautiful. Is our 60 going to be what's going to go here? It might be. There's only one of these pipes. <laughs> so I can't screw this one up. This straight one, well, it's already got some scratches on it. I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, but this guy, there's only one. So I think I'll cut this one first. This is just a straight line. And we know that straight line ends up right here, up next to this breather. I mean, it literally comes in there. So I could pull this out. Set it aside, get this the way I like it, which is something like that, and know that this will come in in that fashion. Leave a little bit of space. I'm thinking through some stuff. This is still going to leave me room to mount my ignition coil. Even though I'm cutting way over here, I'm still covering it up. I would like to cut it relatively straight. Therefore, you know, a bandsaw would be really nice. I'll take it over to the car one last time, just to make sure that looks good. I also change my glove. It's disintegrated. Looks like it. This stainless goes through discs pretty good. I've already got spares. tape, much straighter cuts. It's still not perfect. I'm going to take it over to the grinder, clean it up, blow it out, brake clean it, blow it out again, make sure it's all nice and clean. And come out slightly. I've just sort of been fiddling with it to try to get the angle and everything right so I can take a measurement between here and the inside of the fender uh, so that I can figure out how much to cut off of this straight tube to connect this to the inside. It appears I'm going to have to get another 90 because I ordered a 90 and a 60, but I need a 90 here, I need a 90 there, and I need a 90 there. So I need one more 90 to uh, complete the whole package here. My only complaint would be that uh, the stainless doesn't really match up with that. But as far as the 90 matching up with the hole, it seems to match up better than the 60. All right, well, this one we can measure because this is straight. Like these curved pieces, well, that's almost impossible to measure those up. Uh, but this guy, pretty straightforward. And I know that this inner pipe comes in right there. But looking at this, I, I want to account for a little bit going up in there. I think I like it six, in, six inches or five and a half would probably be fine. But if I cut it a little long, so what? It either goes up into the tubes a little farther or I can trim it. Let's start by measuring out our six. And you know what? Considering that I can probably get a six inch piece, I may at some point, since this one's all marred up anyway, get a six inch piece that's pre-cut. That way I don't have to worry about any beads or anything on the end. Some of you are concerned about that. Face shield. It's way better for this kind of thing. And makes me sound like Darth Vader. I am 
I'm your father. Yeah, not really. At least I hope not. Now we really won't know the extent of the success of this little modification, although it already feels like this should be longer. Let's see how much is sticking out inside the fender. So that's how much we got. So that hose will go right up on that because it went right up to the lip. It's gonna add in the clamps because I can. That should do her. Now I just need to wait for the parts to show up. And that, viewers, will conclude episode six of the Ford Fairmont Final Assembly. Like I said, it wasn't really a long one today, and it, it wasn't groundbreaking, but uh, like I said, every time I look at that carburetor hat, I feel a little bit sad inside. I thought about getting another one, but you know, hey, it works. And as long as something works, well, you just keep going with it. I'll put links in the description to additional Ford Fairmont videos and additional stuff, tools, and things I used in the video. Please check the description for additional info. If you have automotive questions, I ask you head to airatthecarguy.com, which will also be linked down in the description. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and do all those things that help me make a living. Also, don't forget to watch the video. <laughs> be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.